So folks, Dave Mate, all day, Sherba Mate, para siempre. Salud. Estoy tomando la sherba, la sherba de Brasil. Se llama Canarias. I'm drinking some yerba mate from Brazil. You guys know how I do it with the yerba mate. Magical, powerful herb. Elixir of health. Drink of the gods and drink from the gods. Drink of friendship. Salud. Let's rap a little today, mind pedals. Let's rap. What is this? It's a knife. It's an extremely sharp knife. So sharp that I could probably even shave with it if I wanted to. The thing about a knife is that it'll last you a lifetime if you take care of it. This knife will last me forever. Now, with this knife, I have to sharpen it. In order to get it very razor sharp as it is, I have to hone it. Any woodsman knows that it takes great skill to hone a knife and to get it razor sharp. Anybody could get a knife sharp, but to get it razor sharp it takes great skill. It takes a desire for a knife to be that sharp. Now, if you get a knife too sharp, if the, this is called a blade profile, the angle of the blade, if that's too sharp, the knife will break. It'll be uh, inert. It'll have no use. The knife, in effect, will... Uh, it won't be that good of a knife if it's too sharp. Yeah, you can still cut with it, but the blade will brittle, and then it'll break eventually, and then you'll have to resharpen it, and then by that time, the, the blade won't be uniform anymore. So the idea is to that if I want to keep this knife forever, I have to maintain it. Every single uh, time I use it, I have to use it with care. I have to sharpen it every once in a while. I have to hone it, polish it, and I have to keep it in a good place. I like knives, and uh, this knife actually helped me think about life in many ways. This knife is not so different in terms of it being a symbol uh, than my life, than my passion, than what I'm doing. The most important thing to do is to carry out your work. The work that I've been talking about for four years now making these videos, the work that you have to do, the work that is your passion, but it's not necessarily even your passion. We don't want to objectify it because that creates the duality of there being the object and the subject that, oh, the passion is something outside of me. The passion is something that I have to do. It's some object. It's some item. No, the passion is really you. You are the passion, and you carry out your mission, whatever that mission may be, writing, uh, painting, uh, working with knives, hunting, working with herbs, healing people, you're a doctor, you're a nurse, you're a musician, you're into finance, you work on Wall Street, you're a stockbroker, you short sale homes, you are an accountant, you play hockey, you skateboard, maybe you sell weed, I don't know. <laughs> it could be an infinite amount of things. Now the idea here is to follow through. Work on those things. Work on yourself. To write as a writer is to work on yourself. It's to enlighten yourself. To paint as an artist is to work on yourself. It's to enlighten yourself. If you don't work on yourself, then you become dull. Just as if you don't sharpen this blade, it becomes dull. And if the blade is dull, and if you are dull, you're useless. You're just a blob 
of organic meat walking around with a mouth, you're just voice box. You're a voice box. All you do is talk. You don't have time to be nice to people. You don't have time to be mean to people either. You don't have time to be evil to people. You don't have time to be good. You don't have time to be bad. These are all just maya, illusion. The only thing that you have to do is carry out your mission and do it as much as you can do it. Now, I'm not going to say you have to do it all day, you have to do it every day, because that's already inherent. It is you, and you are infinite. But it would be a grave mistake to say, okay, well, I'm infinite, so by the laws of deduction, if I'm infinite, then I have all the time in the world, so I could just sit on my ass and do nothing because I'll just keep on coming back, you know, samsara, the cycle of rebirth and death. I've read enough Hindu philosophy. I've read enough Eastern philosophy to understand this very well. I've read enough of Alan Watts to understand uh, how not to fall into this uh, fatalistic trap of determinism. So, uh, yeah, let me just do whatever I want to do because I am who I am. This is my passion is who I am. And it doesn't matter because I'll just die and come back. I'll die and come back. No, 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 no. That's a grave, grave fallacy. So, to some degree, you have to think about time. Time is limited. You can't rely on the metaphysics for this and say, no, I'm infinite. No, 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 no. You're here to carry out your mission, and that mission is time sensitive. You must carry it out now. Now, regardless of whether or not you carry it out now, maybe it takes you a million years, a thousand years, that's irrespective, that's irrelevant of the fact that you must do it now. Because now is the only time. Now, I'm not going to go off into some er er Eckhart Tolle rant. I don't have time for that. I want this to be a short video. So what I'm saying here is that every... I don't want to say every day, but I almost have to, to simplify this thing. Every day you must sharpen the knife. You must hone your skills, whatever that is. I don't know what it is. You must hone it, though. But you must not overwork yourself. If you overwork yourself, you become too sharp. You know those people that are just too fucking sharp? They know too much. You know what I mean? They've read too many books. They rely too much on the ego. They rely too much on the prefrontal lobe. And they just break. They snap. Because they have no foundation. All they did was spend time studying and reading and, you know, trying to inflate their ego to impress people. That's becoming too sharp. You don't want to become that sharp. If you become too sharp, you break. The idea is that, and I'm a writer, so I always refer to myself and use myself as the analogy. There are many days that I don't write. Maybe I go two, three days without writing. That's okay, because that's the pause. The pause is just as important as the action. Inaction and action, action and inaction. So when I don't write, I'm still thinking of ideas. I'm still uh, reading. I'm still studying. So that when I do write... I created the fertile fodder, that hummus of growth that's going to come forth into my writing. But the idea is to be actively engaged. Don't think of the physical action as it, as the only thing. No, when I'm not writing, I'm still writing. And when I'm writing, I'm not writing. These things are dualistic. So I am not writing anymore. I am a writer. I am the writer. I'm not just drinking mate and talking about it and selling it. I am mate. I have to become mate. And mate has to become me. This is what it means to get rid of the, the duality, the object and the subject. The object and the subject become one. So to simplify this whole diatribe, you must continue on. You don't have time to be anything other than yourself. You don't have time to impress. You don't have time to digress. You don't have time to, you know, be nice to people. You don't have time to be mean to people. You don't have time to uh, say, okay, yeah, my passion is, uh, is to teach English in South America, but let me push that back for 10 years and just do what my mom wants me to do for the next 10 years and be miserable. No. 
You don't have time for that shit. This is what I mean. You don't have time. You have to do what you need to do now. And you know what you need to do. I don't need to tell you. And I don't even know what you need to do. Only you know what you need to do. The knife must be continually, constantly, unwaveringly attended to. You must sharpen the knife. Sharpen it as much as you can. Hone your skills. You must become the master that you are destined to become. I must master my trade. I must master myself, which means that I must master my writing. I must master my speaking. I must master my mate. These are all things that I am actively honing. I am actively engaging. I am actively interfacing with, participating with. Because I have to. I have no other choice, you know? This is my passion. These are my passions. Now, if I didn't do those things, like I said, I would be dull. I would be inert. I would be lost. So it's very simple. You know what you have to do, and do it, and do it, and do it. But don't get caught in this whole uh, cycle of, oh, I gotta do it now, I gotta do it today, I gotta do it for four hours today. Uh, okay, if I didn't do it today, then I, I failed. Or if I didn't do it for a week, then I failed. No, you have to get out of that sort of sequencing. Just do it. And even the days that you're not doing it, just know that you're doing it. It's still in your heart, and then you're gonna come back to it, and you're gonna do it. One year will pass, two years will pass, 30 years will pass. And you'll still be doing it when you're on your deathbed, because you have to do it, just like Thoreau was writing on his deathbed. Emerson was writing on his deathbed, you know? I mean, Whitman was writing uh, until the day he died. I mean, all these people were doing these things to the, to the day that they died. And you have to have a single pointed devotion to yourself, to your passion. And you gotta become ignorant to all the chatter out there. And most people just talk, because they feel good talking. Oh my god, the idea of becoming successful is so delicious that every day I'm going to wake up and think of that idea. Every night I'm going to go to sleep and think of that idea. It's so delicious. They're addicted to the idea. That idea is creating, you know, hormones, is creating uh, feel-good chemicals in the brain. And they're just feeding off the idea. And then they hate themselves as well. It's sort of a... It's sort of a, you know, ambivalence. It's sort of a... a what is it? Um, uh, you're basically torturing yourself because you love the idea of becoming successful, but then you hate yourself because you know that all you're doing is thinking about the idea of becoming successful. Get rid of that and find success in every day in doing what you're doing and doing it now. What else could I say about that? That's a wrap. Salud. Drink that mate. Check me out, circleofdrink.com. Check me out, mindpedals.com. Let's keep this going. Dave Mathe.